Good afternoon. Members of the class of 2020, thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us parents and staff and community. We're so proud to join you today with members of our class of 2020 and to have this community town hall around how we will best honor and commemorate this very special 2020 commencement season. You know, we are now uh, April 12th, just about three weeks away from the beginning, the 1st of June, the beginning of our 2020 commencement season. And we have uh, goals that we're hoping to achieve today. And that is that we'd like to share what we've heard from you in the survey that we've taken. We had great participation. We'd like to share our current thinking around our 2020 commencement ceremonies. And most importantly, we have guests of honor with us today, members of the class of 2020. And we'd like to hear from both our panelists and from those of you who are joining uh, 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 virtually otherwise. We really have two outcomes during this spring 2020 commencement. First is our priority at all times, and that is to ensure the safety and the health of our students, staff, families, and community. That is always priority number one. At the same time, we have a very deep commitment and a strong priority to celebrate and honor this very special moment in the lives of our 2020 graduates. We are so proud of each of them and we want to honor and respect and give them all the accolades that they're due uh, in the long tradition, more than a hundred years of graduates in Ann Arbor Public Schools. Um, so I wanna begin by just uh, sharing our high school principals have joined us on the panel, and I know uh, Scott, our tech person, is going to put up the Hollywood Squares where you can see them. Uh, high school principals, will you wave, and we'll uh, get you introduced better in a little bit. And then we're very excited to give a shout out, um, not only to uh, our principals here, Deans Tuzinski and Maku, Dr. Schwam from Huron, Mr. Louder from Pioneer, Mr. McElmill from Skyline. But we also want to give a shout out to our class principals, their class sponsors, our teachers, our counselors, all the great teams who are joining us by remote today or those who may join a little bit later on. We know that you all have walked alongside uh, these graduates since their earliest days of school and we're so glad that you've joined us today. It is my great honor to introduce five members of the class of 2020 who are serving with us on this panel today. They are uh, Raya Patel from Huron, if you'll just wait. There she is. And Shay O'Brien from Community. Layla Dobbins from Pioneer. And uh, Rashea Haas from uh, Pathways, there you are, in Santana Malniak from Skyline. Very good, we're glad you're here. All right, with that, students, we wanted to just really start by hearing your voices in this very important and critical conversation. Would you just share with us a little bit, uh, first of all, about how long you've been in the Ann Arbor Public Schools? And I know some of you joined at Safety Town, which, uh, believe it or not, was quite a long time ago now, um, when you were four years old or five years old. Um, so considering these previous eight weeks and all that has transpired in the spring of your very important senior year, Considering all of that, would you share with us today, what are your best hopes, your best hope or your best hopes for this commencement season? 
So I don't have an order predetermined. If you want to wave or I can start in alphabetical order, how do you prefer, guys? Okay. How about Raya from Huron? What are your thoughts today? Um, I feel like I just want to be able to celebrate um, all our achievements with my friends, family, and um, especially the teachers because they had a big part in everything we have, of it, we have achieved and our journey throughout high school. Thank you. Friends, family, and teachers. Very good. Um, Shay, what are your thoughts? Um, well, uh, as a community student, I think we have a, we have a unique perspective and we have a, a unique learning environment where uh, we're especially close to our teachers. So not everyone wants to, everyone wants to see their friends. And obviously that's super important to us too, but that, uh, that kind of send off to our building and that, uh, that send off to the teachers that have been with us for the last four years is very important. Wonderful. Thank you. It's about the teachers. Um, Layla, what are your thoughts? Yeah, kind of piggybacking off of Rhea and Shay, um, like they said, the teachers in Pioneer, this is also a loss for them because of how much effort they've put into the class of 2020. And, you know, I miss them greatly now. Even my principal, you know, I have a good relationship with my principals at my school, so I'm going to miss them so much. So also just incorporating them in our graduation, as well as the underclassmen, I think it's very important uh, for me in my years in high school. Uh, I didn't say I was in high school uh, in our Ann Arbor district for four years, so you also said to say that. But um, our, the underclassmen and the juniors, this is also a loss for them because they don't get to say goodbye to the class of 2020. and uh, I tried to be a role model throughout my four years at Pioneer for them. So um, getting to graduate and for them to see me graduate and be a part of that was something really important that, I mean, I'd hope to somehow carry through uh, given the current restrictions. So, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Layla. Um, so that idea of your teachers and the underclassmen that you've modeled for this time. Santana, what would you share today? Um, well, my best hope obviously would have been to have like a traditional in-person ceremony. Uh, but since this isn't possible, I think I'm most looking forward to seeing what options could actually work out. Um, I think it's most important to me to have the opportunity to celebrate with my classmates, my teachers, my principals, but then also have like an available option where our parents can con congratulate us or our friends and family. That's great. Thank you so much. I think it's Rashaya that I, we have to hear from yet. Uh, share with us your thoughts, if you would. Um, basically, everybody summed up everything. Um, we all really had the vision of finishing school with like everybody. That we start out with holding everybody's hand and like just basically walking across the stage. But as we know, we can't really do that. Mm -hmm. um, I just hope that we basically like get acknowledged properly, like how we would if we had to walk across the stage and just a chance for like our family to actually like, I don't know how to explain it. Um, it's our family to act, like properly be able to be involved kind of yes. how we are. Yes. And yeah, with the teachers and everything, y'all basically just summed it up. That's great. Thank you so much. Um, those of you that didn't say how long you've been in the Ann Arbor Public Schools, help us out if you would. Just wave at me. Shay, start if you would. Hi, uh, uh, I moved to uh, moved to Ann Arbor in the third grade. I went oh. to Hazley for three years, uh, Forsyth for three years, and now Community for four. That's wonderful. Hazley, Forsyth, Community. Shia, what what about you? Um, I've been and I have public schools and since I was about four years old. Um, I started off at I started off at Northside, which is now Seam. Yes. And, uh, after Northside, I went to Logan. After Logan, Clegg, then Forsyth. Then um, I spent one year at Huron, but now I'm at Pathways. So. That's wonderful. Thank you. Santana, what's your career been like? Um, Well, I did go to Safety Town, and then I went to Abbott. 
she may be fading in and out, so we may have to we may have to wrap back to you, Santana, on that. Okay, Layla, I think you said it, but would you say your schools? Yeah, I came to Pioneer in ninth grade, and I've been um, in Pioneer all four years. But my dad is an Ann Arbor Pioneer graduate and went through all Ann Arbor public schools, same as my mom. She went to Huron, though, so my dad went to Pioneer. They went to Huron, so I'm pretty familiar with Ann Arbor and everything, but I've just been in the high school. I didn't go to any of the elementary schools there. That's wonderful. Thank you. And who yeah. did I miss on this question? Santana, it looks like you're doing better now on your connection. What? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I went to Safety Town, and I've been going to AAPS schools from kindergarten till now. So I went to Abbott Elementary and then Forsyth and now Skyline. That's wonderful. Who did I miss on this question? I don't, okay, thank you. Go ahead, Rhea. I've been in Ann Arbor Public Schools since uh, freshman year. I went to Celine before, but, and then I came to Ann Arbor Public Schools. That's wonderful. Well, it's great to have you all with us today. Thank you for sharing your voices. It's a big deal to have you on this panel, to have your voices uh, in this uh, conversation today. Um, principals, lead principals, you represent all of your staff, and I think it says a lot about this class of 2020 that in all of their responses, and I took notes on what they said, everything they said was about someone else, that they wanted to make sure their teachers, their principals, their underclassmen, their families were involved. That says a lot about you guys, and I'm so very, very proud uh, of you today. In every day. Uh, principals, what would you share? And then we'll move over to Mr. DeAngelis and get a summary of our survey so we can see what the survey says. And then we'll come back and share some thoughts about our, our planning so far. Um, principals, do you want me to call on you or? Mr. Louder, let's start in the center, historical, historic Ann Arbor High School. Well, I think that the, one of the biggest things that I would say is that we are in the midst of something we've never been in before. And I guess more than anything else, you know, there's a reason people like home cooked meals more than they like fast food. You know, we, we have a plan. We want to put a plan together, but that takes time. It takes planning. It takes care. And so, you know, we could have very easily slapped something together and said, Hey, here you go. This is what we're doing. And, you know, fast food drive through type of a thing, but it wouldn't have been as meaningful or as thoughtful or as purposeful as what we're going through now and getting feedback and finding out what they want or what they best need so that we can try to fulfill that. That's great. From the historic Ann Arbor High School to the school on the river, the Huron River, Dr. Schwamm, what would you add? Well, I just want to start by saying that. Um, I admire the resilience of our class of 2020, and um, we really want to honor you in the way that we can best during this difficult and unprecedented, uncharted time in a way that's safe for all of us. And so, you know, our commitment is to really honor you with as many of the components that we can um, virtually so that we can um, make it as close to what you would expect and so our goal is to honor you and to do that well and um, for our Huron students to um, have you graduate and feel part of our family as you know proud river rats so that's that's our intention thank you to the heart of the district that small campus in the very middle of town mr. McCo what do you have to offer in this conversation uh, I'll start off by saying good afternoon. Um, at Pathways, we call each other a family, so hello, family. Um, and I'll just say that, you know, we are a family. We've been thrown a challenge here together, um, connecting with one another and taking care of each other has always been what we do. Um, so it's even more uh, the key now to do that. And so um, our aim here as we, you know, have come together as a staff team 
has been to make sure we're doing all those things uh, that we need to do to take care of our class of 2020 now. Um, we share this pain. You know, we anticipated doing things the way um, has normally been done, and we can't do that. But we're excited about connecting with you all uh, from here on out to plan the, the most, um, to make the most out of this moment now. So uh, we're just looking forward to getting right in here with our, our students and our families to make this um, the best thing we can. Thank you, Mr. McCoo from Pathways in the other center of town, um, small campus uh, community high school, Dean Marcy. Good afternoon, everyone. It warms my heart to see so many students at one time. Uh, we miss you in our buildings. And I think for me, I want you guys all to know that it's important to us. I think I would reiterate a lot of what the other principals have said. It's important to us to send you off in the right way, to honor you, to celebrate you. You know, as Mr. McCoo said from Pathways, we are a family. And I think they always said, you know, Ann Arbor is, is, is a big, small town. Um, and although community is a small school, I do know that I recognize so many kids from across the whole district all the time when I'm out and about. Um, but I know at community especially, you know, when we get to know these kids, I know every single kid by the time they walk across that stage. And we are looking forward to doing something that feels unique and special so that you know that you're important to us and we want to honor you and we want to do something that makes it so it is a memory for you that you want to keep forever. I mean, I've been anticipating this a long time. I do have a vested interest. I have my own daughter who should be on that stage with me. So know that I'm well aware of how you guys are feeling. Um, it pains us too, and we are going to figure it out and we want to hear more ideas. I think the, the more we work, the better we'll get. Beautiful. And uh, Skyline High School, Mr. Corey McElmail. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I think I can just, I can echo a lot of what my colleagues have said, and I'm just so proud of the students we had before us today. Mm -hmm. um, that idea of family, uh, Skyline is a family as well. We use that term with our kids and with our parents because we want to create a home for our kids at Skyline. Um, this commencement, it's it's the culmination of everything our children have achieved for the last 13 years of learning. And so it is huge for us. Um, it's no easy task to redesign what is the celebration and the honoring of what our kids have done. And so I think all I can express, Dr. Swift, and to all of you, know that the, the AAPS uh, staff, the APS administration, the APS community loves our kids. We love our kids. We love our schools. We love our community. And but we also really want to be thoughtful and ensure that the plans we make meet your needs and meet the needs of our full community. And so that's one reason we're here with you today. That's one reason maybe you've heard other districts communicate a little bit faster with their students um, is because we want to make sure we take the time to build what is right for you and what is conscious of making sure we can do everything the best we can given the constraints that we'll face at the time. So I'm glad you're all here with us today to help plan this, to help um, hear what we have in store for you. I am so excited just to get to celebrate all of you. Um, commencement's amazing for me, and this one's gonna be different, but it is gonna be just as special for the class of 2020 because there's no way we would give you anything but. Very good, thank you. Well, um it's important to hear about the survey that you all responded to. And I just want to thank you all. We had 920 participants, about 334 students, 438 parents, and we had more than 20,000 ratings on thoughts. So there's a lot of rich data. And Mr. DeAngelis, our executive director of high schools, is going to share with us. Mr. DeAngelis, we're also, um, I'm believing, we'll have this published, this survey, following this town hall today. So folks can get in and read all the comments and manipulate, look at all the different views of the data. Um, so that'll be up on the website, correct? That is correct. Sorry about that. Okay. Uh, this will be up on the on a website somewhere. We'll send you the link to this. Um, while I'm making this short presentation to share with you some of the significant themes, I'll show you how interactive the data that we'll be putting out there is uh, and how you can see the different thoughts and what people said about different things. But what I'd like to do is share my screen right now and show you 
Um, just one of the ways in which the data from this survey is represented. And on this page, what you're going to see are six themes, five significant themes, and then one uh, that we've labeled uh, unthemed, and I'll share with you what's in, what's in that category. Uh, but one of the things that you'll see as I, as I um, click on these boxes, I can actually go in and see all of the thoughts, and you will be able to do this too when the link is sent to you. So you'll be able to see the thoughts that comprise this theme as you go through. But I wanna just briefly share with you what some of those significant themes were. First and foremost, uh, to the question that we asked about what were you most looking forward to, overwhelmingly uh, participants talked about graduation, the ceremony of graduation. But there was a lot of really specific thoughts about um, that they were looking forward to capturing the moments within graduation, that picture uh, in cap and gown, hearing their classmates speak, listening to students uh, give speeches and performances, the ways in which the ceremonies are set up to honor the seniors, uh, receiving the diploma and walking across the stage. So a second significant theme was just those elements of the actual ceremony. The third uh, theme was participants wanted some form of a final culminating activity for the class of 2020. Uh, this is something that um, we know um, may be difficult due to some of the restrictions about social gatherings, uh, but I think in a few minutes you'll hear about a plan that we have uh, for each of the five schools that will allow the seniors an opportunity to be together, uh, but be together in a very, in a very safe way. Um, the fourth theme was the participants uh, gave lots of suggestions about alternatives for the graduation ceremonies and other senior events. And when you click on, um, when you click on the alternatives box, you'll see uh, within here there were about 110 total thoughts and some of the things that people shared with us. And we, we took some of that feedback and it helped, it helped us inform some of the discussions that we've had so far. And then the last uh, significant theme was that participants shared that what they were looking forward to were all the other end of the year events, uh, like prom, the senior all night party, uh, clap outs got mentioned quite a bit. And uh, we think that part of what we're going to present today captures that clap out moment, or at least that moment where seniors are recognized. Um, as well, and as I said earlier, there were some, uh, there's an unthemed category here where there were thoughts that received significant ratings uh, that warranted them being included in the summary report that the district will publish following the town hall meeting. But again, uh, when we send out this data, you'll see a table that looks very much like this, and you'll be able to click on it and see all of the thoughts and the ratings. Uh, one of the other ways we represent the data is with a bar graph. Uh, and you can see here, it's a bar graph that just shows you the approximate um, average rating of each of the of the themes and from this one you can also click on one of the bars and see um, the thoughts that were associated with that but again uh, if we wanted to basically quantify this not that it's um, this was not really a quantitative survey but if you wanted to quantify this you can see that the graduation ceremony and capturing the moments within graduation were two of the themes that garnered the most um, ratings as people went through the survey. Mr. DeAngelis, will you show the word cloud before you get out of that? I and will. Then, and then also show them um, there's something else you show with that part. Well, I can show the word cloud, and the word cloud is an interesting uh, and fun interactive uh, tool that you can use. So there's two ways to show the word, uh, word cloud. And again, uh, this view, if you click up here, this is words or size based on the star rating of the thought they appear in. Uh, and so you can see things like walking across the stage and closure and saying goodbye and milestones and accomplishments. Or you can also look at this uh, in terms of the words or size based on how many thoughts they appear in. And when you look at it this way, you can see that graduation uh, was overwhelmingly uh, mentioned in the thoughts that were out there. So um, I think that's... I think those are the ways in which we've presented the, uh, the information. Uh, you'll also be able to just see the raw thoughts. There'll be a place where you can actually go in and see uh, the thoughts. And because we set this up by participant groups, 
Uh, each high school has their own group. So if you wanted to see, for, for instance, what the Pioneer High School students said, um, you'll be able to look at those. And if you want to break that down even further, if I can slide up here for just a second, you'll be able to see this co where comparing student responses to the parent or guardian responses. So the data is very interactive. You'll be able to go in and see. Um, and, and I think it, you'll, what you'll find is it's very consistent with what we shared at the beginning, that there are a set of themes uh, here. And um, it's, it, it, we found the data to be very interesting. And it did inform a lot of the decision making that we've, uh, that we've been engaged in uh, leading up to today. Uh, as we begin uh, laying out what uh, what it will look like to honor our seniors. And may I ask one question? Sure. Uh, so going through those uh, suggestions, uh, some things, would, uh, there were a lot of things about graduation. Obviously, that was the largest word in the cloud. Mm -hmm. um, but there would be one suggestion like there should be no graduation. We shouldn't see each other. This uh, COVID's too big a risk versus we need a graduation let's all go and it doesn't matter and we'll all gather and yeah. hold a ceremony. So there's obviously, there's a lot of graduation talk, but it doesn't all, uh, doesn't all agree with each other. Right. Right. So inside of one section, when you get to man manipulate it, you'll see that there are tensions, exactly what you've shared, Shay, that, you know, some group of people are on this end of the spectrum and others on the opposite end. But in that section, it'll also say, what is the common agreement across these two groups? So it's kind of fascinating that it shows both the um, areas of tension and the areas of agreement for across groups and within groups. So, but you're right, it does show a lot of different perspectives. Good. Any other questions, guys? All right. Well, um, Shay, Layla, Raya, Rashaya, and Santana, we are so privileged to get to honor you. Our team has been working with this data to respond to what you and your 1,200 colleagues, it's around 1,250 or so of you, um, what you all have said to us. So I want you to know that what we're sharing now is really the uh, perspective we've gained from you. But as one of you mentioned, this is just a, another starting point because we hope that you will engage with your principals along with other student leaders in your schools and will be able to have your voice continue at the table. So um, before we do that part, Mr. Cluley, could we come back where I could see? Okay, I just wanna see you for one more minute. Um, this is the culmination of your entire K-12 career. It is a very special time. And one of the profound pieces in all of the data was we heard the moments that you want to celebrate, that you wanted to have the moment to connect with friends. You wanted to have the moment to connect with teachers. Many people responded that they wanted that clap out or that closure kind of component at the school, if that would be possible. That you wanted to have all of those recognitions that you've worked so hard for. So the honor cords, the programs that you've completed, that all of those distinctions be a part of this honoring. We heard a strong pattern around you wanted to see your school, that you felt like that last day was a, you know, you just left on that last day and you didn't know that that was going to be your last day at school. So we've heard all of these pieces. And I also will share that I know as superintendent attending every year all five of these celebrations 
plus Y Hyming, six of them, that each of your schools, even though you, all of the schools have majestic and wonderful celebrations, each of your schools has a special personality to your celebration. So Shay mentioned earlier the unique student voice at Community High School and that ability to connect with your teachers. Um, Pathways is a school that uh, Mr. McCoo, you are, you guys are family, you do it in a very special family way of that student voice being at the center. Here on high school, the school by the river um, has the, the rat ears and the rat tail and you have some very, and for those of you that don't know, the first graduate wears the ears and the last graduate wears the tail. Um, and it's just a part of that tradition of being a river rat. And then Pioneer, uh, Principal Louder, that proud and historic Ann Arbor High School. And there's a special tradition there. In Skyline, uh, those banners of your classes, your uh, learning communities, your small learning communities, and each of the communities being announced and the eagle, and for those of you that haven't been to Skylines, they have a they have a live real eagle uh, present uh, during the opening moments of the graduation. So I guess I just want to share, graduates, that it's important to me as superintendent to see not only that every school do it in this way to honor you all and to commemorate the special culmination. This is your moment, June is your time and we're going to honor you appropriately but it also needs to represent who you are and and what you represent during your time in ann arbor public schools so here's kind of uh some general thinking um and andrew is going to put that up now of how we're thinking based on what you've shared with us that we would plan for this special time one is Oh, I guess I'm, am I? Okay, great. Thank you. I'm sorry. Uh, oh, one is I just shared here. This is the governor's, uh, this is the governor's safe start plan. I bet graduates that you've seen it in parents. We are now in, uh, in phase three of the plan. And you can see there that it says no gatherings. So that's where we are today. And we know that we're just about three weeks away from the beginning of our prior scheduled events. So we think uh, that it's uh, a fair assessment uh, that our top priority of keeping our students, our staff and families and communities safe, um, that this will limit the way we're able to gather together. I want to just go to the next slide if I can. Don't know why I'm having trouble with that, Andrew. One more, if you would. There we go. So what we have uh, as, a, as our uh, foundational thinking is the team has already been busy and they're being printed now, but a personalized yard sign for every graduate. You've seen those in neighboring districts. And I'll go back uh, one. Why don't we jump back yeah, so you can see them. They do have your name printed on them, uh, but these are just the generic ones. So that would be uh, in the yard or wherever, in the window, wherever uh, graduates would want to place it. There we go. Um, of course, you've been looking forward to your caps and gowns and your principals have been working to get those deliveries and get them ready for you. Uh, yearbooks appear to be still in process, but they are forthcoming. We know here in the next uh, next you know, a couple of weeks or so. Um, we know that we heard from you and we certainly want to make sure you get all of the honor cords and awards and certificates that you've worked so hard to earn. Um, 
And then in response to the strong pattern from you that you wanted a culminating activity, an opportunity to go back to the school um, and to have that closure at the school, uh, we're looking at a culminating activity on graduation day, probably along in the afternoon at 5 p.m. or somewhere along around that time. Um, and that would be a kind of drive car event uh, where it would be a, a parade of sorts. And certainly your principals and your teams and will work with you on the details of that. We will have to practice our social distance uh, guidelines as they apply at that time. And then um, after that culminating activity in the afternoon, we would move into a commencement ceremony. That ceremony would be broadcast on CTN. It would be live streamed um, for all to see. Um, and we're, we're glad that it means that your grandparents and folks literally around the globe can tune in and see your graduation. The graduation would be designed as it always is along with you and your principals, but featuring your student and staff and your other traditional commencement speakers. Um, what's really important to us and to your parents, I believe, and to you is that each graduate would be highlighted with a personalized individual moment of recognition. And we will still publish that program booklet that is a keepsake and is important uh, for, uh, for folks to have later on. We have looked at what dates I'm having trouble getting, oh, there it is. Um, we've looked at what dates could work and your uh, teachers and your teams and your principals have been looking at calendars. And um, we know that we'll be able to begin the distribution of all of these materials that we're still waiting on delivery on many of these things, that that delivery window will occur uh, between the 1st of June and the, and the 9th or 10th of June, just depending uh, on, the, on the arrival of your yearbooks and some things that we're still waiting on. Um, but these are the dates that have been designated. Um, so then the broadcast of the ceremony would occur at 7 p.m. on each of these evenings. Uh, it would be a program. Uh, thank you, Mr. Cooley. It would be a program that would be worthy of the honor that you've worked so hard and you deserve to have. Okay, I think we're finished with the slideshow. Um, and so our commitment is that we're gonna work with you. We're gonna work very, very hard to make sure that your wishes and desires within our restrictions, that we're wrapping those into these celebrations, that those 7 p.m. celebrations on each of those evenings will have the dignity and the honor that they would have. Uh, we will be together for those, even though we're physically distant, um, and they will have very much a, a similar feel to how your graduations run um, on, on a face-to-face -face graduation. Our top two priorities is to keep our students, staff, families, and community healthy, and safe. And that means we'll follow the executive orders that are in place at the time of graduation. We don't know the exact nature of those yet. We do anticipate some additional movement by the governor uh, on the 28th of May. We'll know by that time. So we'll have time to adjust. Um, and we're excited about your drive-through event and what that might look like. I know that if it's allowed, uh, your teachers very much would like to be 
socially, physically, socially distant and placed along those driveways, and yet we have to wait and see if that part will be allowed. They would, they would like to give you your clap out uh, if, if we're able to do so on that kind of parade style uh, event. And so that's kind of the general um, preliminary thinking that we're prepared to do. Our commitment is strong. We will work hard every day between now and that date so that you are honored in the long tradition of the Ann Arbor Public Schools and you are welcomed as an alumni of the Ann Arbor Public Schools and as distinct graduates having graduated in a different way from any other class that I know of over these hundred plus years. So, um, you know, Mr. Cluley, we could start with questions from the panel or we could go to questions. Our goal was to have 15 minutes for questions and it's 341, so we're right just doing perfectly. Thank you. Um, what questions do you have, panelists? We'll start with you all. Questions? Um, so I did want to ask, uh, I know there are some families and some students who don't have access to a car. Yes. So how would this parade sort of drive through thing work for those people? Thank you. Um, Santana, I really appreciate the question. And while we're on that, uh, not only the car for the drive through, but also to make sure that everybody's technologically connected to access the ceremony. Of course, um, and I know there are some parts of town that don't get CTN, so we will want to make sure that every family is able to get that broadcast and to participate in the drive-through uh, parade. Uh, principals, what have been your thoughts about um, how we you know, work to support to make sure that every family can access? Um, anybody? Way I back can here. say something here. You know, I think I, I'm glad that you asked it because I think at every single turning point, that's the question we keep asking. Mm -hmm. um, and I can tell you some of the things we've talked about, but I think one thing to know is that for every idea behind it, there's like a spreadsheet, literally. What are the barriers? What do we have to ask so that we can fix that? Because the goal is Dr. Swift and we've all shared is we want this to be amazing for all of you. And to us, we don't meet that standard of even one student can't participate like everybody else is. Yeah. So whether we have every detail worked out, know that it is on our mind because that piece, if not every student can do it, we're gonna change the plan and tweak the plan until everybody can because it's too important to us. Um, and there are a lot of people in this community who are saying, what kind of help do you need? Um, from loaning cars to, to driving somebody somewhere to doing whatever it takes because we are a community and we're gonna figure it out because it's too important to us not to. That's great. I think that's a great response. And I'll look forward to hearing your ideas because we don't want either through the technology or through the vehicle or in any way, we don't want to limit participation. So that's a great question. Um, any other questions? Shay? Uh, so I know a big question on a lot of seniors' minds. Um, it's something that a lot of us have been holding out for it, is whether or not there'd be a possibility uh, to wait into uh, later into the summer for an in-person graduation. Right, so Shay, um, I am not closing the door on that in terms of a school activity, but we have heard strongly that a number, we have students who are joining the military and do, do in other words, there are some folks leaving town. So we feel strongly that we wanna do this in June. That will. That will be the official ceremony, but that doesn't preclude a, a social event later or some other event that you all might, might want to have at your school. Um, principals, do you, I know you've had this question a lot. I get it a lot. What felt bad to us was to let the June moment pass and not be able to anchor something firm. And the problem with this situation is we don't know when. So, um, so that's, that's been our challenge. Um, Mr. McAmel, what would you add to that? 
I just wanted to add, I mean, that question definitely of why not postpone has been raised quite a bit. And I think we wait, raise that question ourselves from time to time to make sure that we're thoughtful about the decisions we make. Um, I want to make sure that we are clear with everyone here that we've, we've spent a, a long time doing some due diligence. And that's why we're coming to you on the day that we're coming to you with this information and, and with our decisions around the plan. Um, we had some opportunities over the last couple of weeks, um, just as recently as last week, to sit on a statewide um, webinar regarding uh, commencement and received advice from um, statewide organizations, MASA, MASSP, regarding the phased plans. And they've really showed us the phases that the federal government has set out in the plan also those that um, our, our, our um, state government has sent out to us and showed us approximate dates in which uh, the, the commencement that all of you are hoping for, when that could occur, uh, given those phases. And the reality of it is what Dr. Swift said much more eloquently than I'll say it, a little bit more bluntly, is it just those, those phases push that plan out way past when you guys have commuted, commuted to us that you're going to be engaged. You've talked about, our students have said they'd like to see something pushed out till summer, but they haven't said they'd like something pushed out until they're in college. And what we're seeing in the phase plans right now is the commencement that we've put on for 400 students with thousands of participants in a huge stadium, that's not gonna occur for a while. And so what we wanna ensure happens is we do not want this senior class to go on unnoticed and unhonored. And while a virtual commencement is what none of us are wishing to communicate to you today, it is the reality of what we're facing right now. And then what we are gonna ensure we do on top of that as Ann Arbor Public Schools is try to find a way to make that unique and meaningful for all of you um, by this drive-through idea that we're adding on top of that. Um, we're gonna share the details we have of that with you today, but the reality is, is there's gonna be some more planning. Because just like you're saying in the comments, and, and I know it doesn't always feel this way, guys, we are listening to you. I've spent tons of times going through that thought exchange for, uh, survey over the last couple of weeks, and my students that meet with me, Santana can speak to this, I look at your survey results. I can quote them. So just know that we are hearing you, and there's so many things that we wish we could tell you today that yes, we're going to do that, but what we're also not gonna do for you in Ann Arbor Public Schools is send you false promises and continue to push you off on hearing the reality of what's going to happen. We're gonna be clear, we're gonna be thoughtful, and we're gonna come at you with all the care and love we always do to let you know that we're gonna plan you something as amazing as we can, but we're also gonna keep you safe, and we're gonna keep the teachers that you express so much love for at the beginning of this call safe as well. Safe call, safe as well, safe as well. Thank you. Layla, Le you had a question? Yeah, so a few people have um, uh, mentioned about the virtual graduation, and I was just wondering, if there could be any way to incorporate something like, I don't know, a senior quote or favorite memory, short favorite memory shared after their name, just to make it a little more personal than just reading names off paper. So that was just something that was brought to my attention that I thought maybe you guys can consider, um, obviously like appropriate quotes or appropriate memories, either one, I'm not sure, but I just think that would make the virtual graduation a little more personal um, than just names, yeah. Thank you, Layla. That's ex exactly an idea we've been working with is how could we make it even more personal by adding in, you guys will work with your principals to sort out which of those paths you'd like to go. I know at Community, they give, they give a little 15 second, 30 second um, talk. And so we can do that. Um, Dr. Schwamm, you were going to add. I was just going to add about the the um, our goal to make this meaningful and and to personalize it. And so I know that in at Huron we are you know talking intensely about how to do that because that helps make it um, more personalized uh, when it's not real and in person. I also want to tag on to what Mr. McAmill said about us being honest with all of you about honest about what we can do and what we can't do and why we can't do it. And so we all know this pains us and we are committed to work with our students to make this as honorable and as meaningful as, as we can and as personalized as possible. Yeah, that's great. Andrew, give us some questions. I wanted to make sure that uh, the people that are listening on Facebook get in some of their questions. Uh, a big one, not specifically about graduation that has come in is the question about uh, the traditional uh, early release for seniors getting done with their school year before uh, the other students do, 
is that something that is still possible under this circumstance? Um, or are students stuck, uh, even though you're a senior, stuck going all the way to the last day of the traditional school year? Thank you, Mr. Cluley. Who wants that question, principals? <laughs> Mr. McAmeal. Um, I think, you know, that's definitely, that's a hard topic, guys. I think, you know, I understand the class of 2020 has gotten a raw deal here, guys. You know, your end of your, your high school career cut short um, and then not cut short in the way you wanted it to be cut short most. Um, and so I understand. I think one of the things that we really want to communicate to you is our, our goal is to be there to support you in a time that is just unprecedented for you. Um, the class of 2020 is experiencing something that no other senior class has experienced. And it's really important to us and our teachers to be there for you through the end that we can be there for you. And so that means that we have you enrolled in your classes and our teachers are going to work to engage with you um, through the end of the year. I, all know, I also know that you guys are really smart about making sure you prioritize your work and get done what needs to be done. So what we want you to do is we want you to earn your credit. We want you to learn the things that are most important for you to learn to transition on to a post-secondary or whatever your option is past us. Um, and then we want you to make sure that you engage with our teachers to use them for the support and the social emotional help that you need through June. Um, and don't sweat the small stuff. Okay, like as seniors, I think you guys have this school stuff down and you can find ways and make plans um, to have that really fun um, early end to your school year while still being able to respond to some of those check-in points um, with your teachers, knowing that they're going to be there just to look, um, to support you and to be there for you. Like you expressed you want to see them there at your commencement. Um, you guys were all missing you. I, I couldn't imagine that I wasn't going to be able to see this class of 20 for a little bit longer, greet you in the commons each morning as you walked in. And I definitely did not expect to not clap you out at the end. And those seniors that know me know that that was something I was waiting for. So um, our teachers have those same feelings for you and they don't want to keep you on just to keep you on to frustrate you. They want to keep you on because they care and they want to support you through the end. So that seems Mr. Cluley like a, an answer that um, I heard that we're going to work with students and um, we're not declaring an early release at this moment, but, but that we're working with students on those details. What else do you have for this fine group? Uh, there's also the question about um, when uh, they will be turning in their books and when specifically they'll be picking up caps, gowns, honors tassels and those type of things. So um, students, we are under the requirements of the current executive order. And we are all looking to some adjustments to that executive order um, that uh, we will learn about around May 28th. I think you all are aware that's our next announcement from the governor. Um, at this time, we've been directed um, by the executive order that students are not allowed on campus. So um, that, uh, and, and I guess another component, not apart from the executive order, is just simply that your yearbooks and those things haven't all been delivered yet. We're still waiting on that delivery. So you will hear directly from your principal about that scheduled pickup. And if we're still under the same executive order, it may be that a parent has to come. And I know that sounds weird because you're grownups practically, um, but it is the law at this moment, at this time. Uh, but there will be a phased pickup and then we would hope at that time that you would return your books, technology, other pieces that you need to return. Um, probably all of that is in that period after this next phase of the executive order. So June 1st, more or less, and, and beyond. So, um, so we'll work with you. Um, and there will be a pickup, much like we've done technology pickup and we're doing food distribution, same kind of thing. You just pull through and we get things returned and handed out. Um, and your principal will be sharing more of that information over the coming days. We're really waiting to see how much the governor is going to be able to lift the requirements 
so that we can be sure and get this done as quickly as possible in the, in the best way to keep you, your family, and our staff safe. Um, great question. What else, Mr. Cluley? Uh, we also have a question about what pictures will be used uh, for the ceremony. Very good. Um, let me do this real quick and then Shay, I'm going to come to you because I think I saw you waving at me. But um, um, that really will be working with your principal on your production of the ceremony. Um, some of you prefer uh, to do it one way and others will prefer to do it another. Um, so we'll, we'll leave that to your development of your program. I know that many of our, um, Mr. McMill, you were saying it, uh, you've already uh, submitted a yearbook photo or some particular photo that you wanted. So perhaps it's that photo, but we'll, our principals will be and sponsors will be working with you all to sort that out. Principals, did you want to add to that? Okay. Shay, you had a question or a comment, it seemed like. Yes, I, I had a question. Yes. Um, as a, uh, obviously I'm here as a, a community representative, but my, uh, some of my favorite memories in high school came uh, playing sports over at Skyline. Yeah. So uh, as a, uh, as the governor has lifted restrictions on things like tennis and golf, uh, we've been interested in the possibility of a send off for athletes um, in a, uh, a district tournament of some kind uh, in a way to, uh, to see my, my baseball friends that would be for me and for others, all their, uh, their uh, teams of spring sports that they'll never, uh, they'll never get to play together again. Yeah. So uh, whether that it would be possible to, to put something together. Uh, eat, whether it be now or, or later into the summer, because right. as, as important as graduation is for a lot of athletes, that uh, that senior night is, is just as big a deal. I understand the senior night. Um, at this time, we wouldn't have the ability to do that, but um, organizing something later in the summer, um, we can have that discussion through uh, if if the orders are lifted to the point where that would be acceptable. What we've been directed now is that students are not allowed on campus at this time. So that's where we are right now. But let's put a flag in that. Uh, Shay, I've made a note. Okay, thanks. Uh, you know, there are half a dozen moments in life that parents think about with their children and graduation, is one of those. And I often, as I look out at you all, think about how um, graduation is for you. It's about honoring you, but it's also important for your parents and your families. And so we want to, wanted to give a special hour for the parents of the class of 2020. They, um, your birth year was 2002, yes? How many of you were 2002? No? Okay. How about 2003? Okay. 2001? Okay, good. So they, they birthed you between 2001 and 2003, and uh, they've been supporting you all this time, and graduation is one of those moments where they want to see you and they want to recognize and honor uh, the investment that's been made in the rite of passage and the transition uh, in your lives. And certainly none of us were counting on this set of events. Um, and I appreciate the, the uh, responses from your principals today and that idea of, um, of we want to very much just be very frank and honest with each other about all the hopes and all the things we can do and also those uh, things that we're just uh, understanding that at this time we, we aren't able to do. Um, students, why don't we do a little bit different introduction this time, um, and that being um, just sharing within our, within our guidelines that we've kind of laid out, are there ideas that you would like to add 
to, um, to our thinking about how best to commemorate you. I loved that you brought up uh, that we should, uh, with the school parades, think about those who might not have a car and any other barriers that might be in place for, uh, for families. I love that you are thinking about, is it possible to consider a later event in the summer? And then also that you recognize that we don't want to lose this moment in June, which is so important to so many people. Um, and Layla's idea of how about a favorite quote or a favorite memory? So that moment that would have been walking across the stage is maybe even a little more personal in this setting of uh, a virtual graduation. Um, and then the question that came from our audience about the early release and how are we going to turn in our materials and then Shay's um, idea of um, how do we culminate with athletics and with those team sports that you've been uh, invested in and you've been engaged in for years. So why don't we go around and just, um, Rhea from Huron, would you share, what are your thoughts at this point? We just appreciate having your voice at the table. Start us off. Um, I feel like anything we're able to do with like surrounded by the people who have supported us is like well um is definitely important and i like the idea of at least having something um because in case in august if we don't have like if the ban is not lifted at least we had something and we don't regret it going later on while some kids have already gone off to like move into college or something like that okay very good thank you um Layla, what are your thoughts at this point in our conversation? I mean, obviously, we'd all like, like everyone has said, we'd love an in-person graduation, but it's just not realistic at this time. So I definitely appreciate all the effort that um, I know you guys have all, left, like uh, the principals and teachers and class principals have um, the effort you guys have put into making this graduation season special for the class of 2020. Um, because I know it's not easy to just come up with ideas because there's no replacing graduation. So I'm definitely just very appreciative. Um, I'm not surprised, though. Um, this district shows immense love for their students. So just thank you, really, guys. And I'm excited to at least be able to do something to celebrate uh, my four years at Pioneer. Thank you, Layla. Shay, what would you add? Um. Yeah, I would agree. Um, I think uh, to to jump back a little bit, we we talked about uh, as far as pushing graduation back. You said, "Yeah, we can't we can't do that." Obviously, with with uh, state mandated guidelines, but uh, uh, a possible um, reunion of sorts, some some form of event uh, could be in the works as far as going into August. Is there a chance that that kind of event might look like a prom? You know, uh, Shay, I'm hesitant to say that at this time because of all the restrictions that we're under in the extreme unknowns. But I do know that many of the classes around town at all of our schools have talked about what a homecoming, a reunion, a fall reunion could look like. And, um, that certainly can be in the conversation. Um, what what would you see that looking like, Shay? Um. Well, yeah. Uh, as a as a senior, uh, I've uh, seen enough movies and Disney Channel in my day to know I wanted to go to prom. <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, uh, I I would I would love something. Uh, of that nature, whether that be August or September. Um, you mentioned uh, the military, K kids going to the military, not being, uh, they'll be uh, leaving a little early. My uh, ROTC boot camp was canceled, so I guess I'll be around. <laughs> but uh, oh, yeah. I can see where uh, I can see where that would uh, that would throw a wrench in the plans. But I I think it's really important that we all uh, that 
there is some some form of event and no matter how far it's pushed back it's very important that our our 2020 class does get together and and share a moment together absolutely i hear you um shay you have to tell us now where are you going to boot camp and what what branch um uh, so I was, uh, I'm a NROTC at uh, USC, so I'll go to Navy boot camp in Chicago, but that uh, doesn't look like it's, it's, it's on hold for the time being. And so what was your date before? Uh, originally, it was supposed to be mid-July. I was supposed to spend a few weeks on that naval, at that naval base. But. Wow. All right. Well, we appreciate that thought of a social event, a gathering in the fall. Um, what about Rishaya? What thoughts do you have at this point in our conversation, Rishaya? Well, um, I just feel like at this point, with everything that's going on, all the little things count. Um, whatever we can do, then let's do it at this point. Okay. I think she's frozen. Rashaya, we'll come back to you when we get you unfrozen there, okay? Santana from Skyline, share with us your thoughts. Um, well, I think I'm kind of on the same page as Shay. I think my main thing um, was prom for me, just because I'm a member of the Spirit Committee at our student government at Skyline. So one of the main things we run is prom. And I've been looking forward to it for a while. So I think the idea of having some sort of reunion later on, if possible, that it looks like a prom of some sort, I think that would be really exciting. Um, but I do like that we have the online graduation just so that we still get honored some way at this time because this is usually when we get honored. Very good. Thank you. And Rashaya, did we get you back? Oh, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Okay, um, I was just basically saying that uh, at this point, there's nothing we really can do. Um, the little things count. Like, whatever, whatever thing at this point. Um, back to what he said about prom. Yeah, it's just, everybody was looking forward to prom. A, a lot of our parents have spent a lot of money um, this is a lot. This is definitely something that we've been waiting for. But if it's not able to happen, then so be it. Like, there's nothing we can do about it. Just enjoy the virtual ceremony that we're gonna have. And yeah, that's basically it. Thank you, Rashaya. I appreciate it. So why don't we wrap over, uh, Mr. Cluley, just to review the plan, or don't you think we should do that now that we have our parents who joined us? Um, So our thinking is that June is the traditional month when we celebrate our graduating class. We've done that in Ann Arbor for more than 100 years, and it's important to us to honor and culminate uh, the K-12 careers of our more than 1,200 Ann Arbor Public Schools graduates. This is a very special time, and it wouldn't feel right to any of our principals, our teachers, our class principals, our sponsors, our families. It would not feel right for June to pass without a special honor, without those special moments. And so we've heard about the moments that our students want to recognize. And those moments are about connecting with friends and teachers, about having the closure of visiting campus and having the clap out about uh, having the recognitions that you've worked so hard for. So let's uh, move over. Uh, this is the governor's Michigan Safe Start Plan. You can see that we are currently in phase three of that Safe Start Plan. We will not be able to hold our traditional uh, commencement ceremony until uh, phase five or six. Uh, so at this time, we are looking at a virtual uh, ceremony, and Mr. Cluley will forward to um, what that looks like. Looks like um, 
that we would be providing a personalized yard sign and we'll swing back to review what those look like. They will have your first name on them. Um, and so those will be uh, uh, ready for pickup. Um, and then, uh, of course, your cap and gown, the yearbooks. Uh, many of you've worked on the yearbook staff or you've participated in so many activities that are highlighted in those yearbooks. Uh, your honor cords, your awards, your certificates, um, all of those things will be put together in a safe and appropriate way and we will have those available for pickup sometime uh, following June 1st. Um, and then we've heard strongly from you all that the, it's important to have a culminating activity at the school. So we're looking at that kind of drive-through parade and our students and staff will help to sort out exactly what that looks like. Uh, we'll have to keep our public social distancing guidelines, but having a drive-through parade and our AAPD is offered to support that so that uh, we can uh, have folks come together uh, to the school on graduation afternoon. And then each of our ceremonies will occur via a live stream and broadcast on CTN. We're especially excited that grandparents and all of those who are unable to travel uh, will be able to engage uh, via um, online connectivity to participate. Uh, students, as has occurred every year, uh, you will work with your principals and class sponsors. Uh, these events have student staff and traditional commencement speakers, and each and every graduate would be highlighted with the personalized and individual um, moment of recognition. That's the moment that we've all been waiting for and that you've spent your career in the Ann Arbor Public Schools preparing for. Um, and then, of course, we will publish that official program booklet uh, that is a keepsake and a commemorative uh, booklet that's, that uh, shows uh, all of the um, pieces and parts about your commencement ceremony. Um, the dates uh, that we're looking at are here. Um, beginning on Thursday, June 12th, would be Community High School, Pathways on the 15th, Skyline on the 16th, Huron on the 17th, and Pioneer on the 18th. So that's an overview of the preliminary thinking that your principals, your class principals, your teachers, your staff, that's the preliminary thinking about how we would work together to honor um, our students and to honor this um, 2020 commencement. Uh, principals, what would you add? Uh, this hour, we're focused on our parents. And I know, high school principals, that you spend a lot of time, as I did as a principal, um, visiting with, interacting with, engaging and partnering with our parents. What message would you add for our parents today? And then we'll uh, move over uh, into our questions. Um, Mr. McElmill. I just think one thing I would add is um, we've tried to be conscious from the beginning that commencement is important both for our students and our parents, but different aspects of those events are really important to the different audiences. And I think um, it was really important for us early on to realize we had, you know, not just two audiences, really we have our, our community, we have our parents, we have our students, all of those audiences are important for us to consider individually. And how do we, in this unique circumstance, meet the different needs of each of those audiences? Um, I'm sure we're not going to be able to meet all of those needs perfectly and in the best way we wish we could, given the circumstances we're in. Uh, but what I do know is we're being thoughtful as we look through those survey results. And as we hear your feedback today in the comments and even today in what we're able to hear live, um, we're taking that into consideration and trying to make sure we highlight the moments we can, the best we can. Um, we know that photo of your graduate in a cap and gown is important. And so I've, I've seen even in some of the comments some students wondering, well, why is my cap and gown important now? 
students, you might feel that way, but I, I bet you your parents feel a little different. They want to see you in that cap and gown regardless, whether it means it's in that formal auditorium setting or whether it means it's in this virtual commencement that we can put together for you. Um, and so we're really trying to be conscious, yes, students, of what you want to do. You want to gather. You want to come together with your students. You want to make that event unique um, to you. And so hopefully in this parade we put together, you're going to decorate your cars like you would your caps on the way into graduation. And you're going to find ways to make that unique um, within the, the, the constraints we have, making it safe and yet making it unique. And parents, you have your aspects that we're thinking of too. Um, many of our staff are parents too. Um, some really impacted by this class. I mean, we have an administrator at Skyline whose daughter's graduating this year. We have an administrator on this uh, call right now or on this meeting right now whose daughter's graduating with her. And so we really want to make sure not just because it means a lot to us, but because we know it means a lot to you parents. Um, you, we know you had that baby a long time ago and have been waiting so long for this milestone. We want to make it as important as we can. Um, and so we'll keep those audiences, those separate viewpoints in mind as we move forward. Thank you. Um, Mr. McCoo, what about uh, your message for parents uh, at this time? Again, uh, parents, uh, we're family. Um, you have entrusted us with your wonderful children, and this is a, a grand moment here. Um, but with that trust has come much responsibility for us and you together, and we're working together in the midst of this uh, pandemic. Um, you know, safety just has to be priority, and I know where we all are, and we're doing it with you. We're balancing uh, our emotions and um, our eagerness um, to, to, to make sure our students, your students, um, are honored correctly and that we commemorate this moment. Um, but we, we're, we're trying to do it with uh, the wisdom we know you want us to do it with. So we're committed to working together with you. Um, even after this um, town hall meeting, all of us, all of the principals will be reaching out more, I know, and speaking with students as well as you to, to capture some of your thoughts so we can um, work together and make sure we um, uh, put, the best, put, put together the best uh, commencement um, ceremony possible um, under the conditions. So I'm, we're just looking forward and we're committed to doing this as best we can and making the most of uh, this virtual opportunity. Thank you, Mr. McCoon. Mr. Louder, the historic Ann Arbor High School. Uh, once again, um, we recognize that no matter what option we choose, there are going to be some folks who are going to walk away from this unhappy about the choice that we made. Mm -hmm. And so we apologize for that. But ultimately, it's going with something to honor our students or continue to push things back in hopes of being able to do something for our students. So we will do what we can do now. And, and that way we are guaranteeing what we can guarantee. And that is we will do what we can to honor our students and, and their milestone in this moment. Um, we wish things were different. We, we wish there was a better way to go about doing this, but unfortunately this is the hand that we've been dealt. And so we're gonna do what we can to make the most of it. Again, I recognize we're not gonna make everybody happy. There's gonna be some people who are really disappointed in the choices that we make, but believe me, we're making those choices so that we can guarantee that we celebrate them in some way and not just push them through and say, ah, oh, well, here you go, see you later. So again, we're, we're doing the best that we can under the circumstances that we have. Very good, Dr. Schwamm. Hello, everyone. Um, I just wanted to say that we at uh, Huron really recognize how important graduation is. For us, it's our very favorite night of the year. It brings closure for our seniors, but it also re-energizes us for the work of our coming year. It is kind of all of us recommitting to why we do this, why we work with students, why we are in the field of education. That's what it's really all about, in addition to honoring our, our wonderful um, seniors who, prior in the student um, forum, I wanted to recognize all the seniors for being so resilient and so amazing. And I think that's the word that you will be described as um, like for a long time to come that you are resilient and strong. And so I commend you and um, 
really uh, appreciate you. I know that at Huron, and I know working with all of my other principal colleagues diligently and intensely, that we are really committed to putting many of those traditional components of a traditional in-person um, graduation into our virtual ceremony. So we all recognize how important that is and we all will put our own individual um, stamp on it that's particular and special to our schools. So we wanna make sure that moving forward, we keep that in mind. That's great. And Dean Marcy from Community High School. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, you know, I think when you ask us to think about it from a parent's perspective, you know, Corey touched on this a little earlier, you know, I'm definitely wearing my parent hat this year more than ever, but I think every year that I've been at Community High School from when I was a forum leader giving away diplomas for 18 years, so the unique things at our school, you don't get to give away diplomas once you're the dean, you only get to do it when you're a forum leader. Mm -hmm. um, up until recently, I cry every single year that the pomp and circumstance starts playing because we get to know you and we want to celebrate you um, as the students. And so as parents, it's like, it, for us, it's like that birthing process, you know, like we are launching these kids and we feel like we've done that in partnership with you. Um, and I do think that once I became a parent, I understood my role so differently because I could connect and understand so much more of the parent perspective. And you know, I, I think it's important, a few things that were said earlier, this idea that we are considering both perspectives all the time, because what a kid wants and what's important to them in this moment is not the same thing as for a parent. And I think we just have to remember that we want to all give something to everybody, um, in, including our staff. You know, Janet mentioned this idea that, excuse me, Dr. Schwamm mentioned this idea that our staff leave, I mean, with a permagrin. It's like that, that boost of energy, because we just love seeing our seniors up there and having that and, and seeing you let's say you're growing up it's like I mean we've seen it we've known it but it's a really special moment and I think it's important for you to know that we want it to be special and that's why it's we're gonna take the time to gather this this way break it down in smaller groups as Mr. McCoo said with our buildings we're gonna keep working on this to make certain that we hit all those moments my favorite takeaway from today is my quote that I'm gonna use, and I will quote you forever from Pathways, all the little things count. Yeah. And I think if we keep coming back to that phrase and we measure what we wanna do by your phrase every time, all the little things count. We have to think about what are those little things for parents and what are those little things for kids? And if we keep coming back to that, we'll get this as right as we can for you guys. And just know um, we're committed to doing it. I love that, thank you so much. I want to uh, hear what Mr. Cluey has in terms of questions, and I'd love it if some of the students, if students, if you wanted to help respond to questions, we will help if needed. Um, and then students, I am going to throw one more volley your way, and that is your words for parents. And I have uh, taken careful notes. And I have, like Dean Marcy, quotes from each of you students today that I'm going to carry with me in my heart as we continue to work on making this completely special for you all, uh, this June celebration. Mr. Cluley, what do you have from our parent or just audience at large? What do we have? Uh, there's a question asking whether or not we could work with uh, the PTC PTSOs at the various schools and come up with some form of summer celebration of some sort, uh, even if it couldn't be a graduation ceremony due to, you know, the, the state guidelines and whatnot. Um, but could we look at some other type of event sometime during the summer? Um, you know, Mr. Cooley, I think PTO is a perfect place to go with that. I cannot speak for them, of course, and, and please, PTO presidents, no, I'm not trying to... Uh, put anything off on you, but aren't uh, principals, aren't our PTOs normally the ones that organize the overnight events or not necessarily? Corey? Uh, we have a committee that uh, for the all senior all night party or the senior all night party at Skyline, they're a subset of our PTSO. Um, I know at least at Skyline, we've been in conversation with that group already to talk about what it might look like to plan um, a, a later 
social event for the class of 2020. Um, the question is going to be a raise, uh, guys, it still is, at what point um, do you guys want to continue to hold off on that? And at what point do you want to move forward? And so I think that's what we're going to continue to assess with our student body. Um, but absolutely, our All Senior All Night Party parent group has already reached out to us and we've been in conversation with them um, and have some great ideas in plan. Um, we're also making sure that we're thoughtful, again, about um, you know, everything that we can do and everything, the whole plan wrapped together as we advise that group as well. Very good, thank you. Uh, we have another question or suggestion about doing graduations uh, staged in small groups, like all the A's come in and do a graduation, all the B's, uh, any thoughts about that process? Uh, thank you, Mr. Cluley. That certainly has been a part of our discussions over previous weeks. Um, we're, we're at a point on the governor's phased reopening where no gatherings are allowed. So that does place limitations. And the other concern is the size of our graduating classes. Um, so, uh, so those are two limitations on that idea of doing the one at a time or five at a time uh, kind of ceremony. Uh, principals, what would you add to that? Mr. McNamara? Um, I just, I think one of the things I would like to add that um, I think has been important in a way that you have led our district always, Dr. Swift, is keeping the safety and security of our community and our students at heart at all times. And um, the stay at home order has is an order, but it has a heart to it as well. And so I see many districts um, maybe gathering students for distributions, but the heart of our stay at home order is to stay home unless things are essential. And while commencement is, is hugely important to us, I do want to remind our community that this is May. And we are typically graduating students in June once the, these restrictions have been lifted and we have time to be patient. While I understand the urgency and the desire to move a little bit faster, we do have a little bit of time to be patient and be safe. Um, so while other schools might be working in ways to bring community together um, and looking at distribution of items, that still would mean in Ann Arbor Public Schools that we are bringing over 1,300 families through our schools for something that is truly not essential to be done at this time. And so it doesn't mean that we won't work to distribute things to families and get families to come through in a way, but honestly, having every single senior walk through our facility, even for that um, individual graduation ceremony, would still mean uh, near 400 individuals and their families walking through one common space in a short amount of time, which is a high risk for disease transmission. And so what we do want to be very cautious about is no person on this call, viewing this call, or part of Ann Arbor Public Schools in any way, shape, or order wants to be part of further transmitting this disease and further harming our community. So we're going to be very thoughtful in our plans. And even if that means giving some really tough choices and decisions to our community that we know we would rather give you something else, um, we're going to make sure that our plans are really safe and really sure and follow that order, not just to the word, but to the heart of what it truly means. Good, yes, Santana. Um, one thing I wanted to say is that I've been on a couple of calls with the principals at Skyline and they did mention that because we have such large schools that we're not able to do a lot of the things that the smaller communities with smaller school districts are showing and we're seeing other students getting these different opportunities. So though we're not able to do those right now, I think it's important for students to keep perspective and just say, okay, we might not be getting to do all these things right now, but there is an opportunity to do it later on. Thank you, Santana. Layla, what did you want to add? Yeah, this is kind of just a message for like students and parents with ideas um, just to keep in mind, um, like Santana said with the restriction, because we are such a big district, but also there's so many little things that go into um, having an in-person event that we don't think about, um, like that uh, alphabetical idea, uh, if we did do all the A's come in and graduate, there would also need to be a cleaning staff to come in after the A's, after the B's, and they would have to um, be a cleaning staff, different people, because uh, you, you think about chairs, and since this disease is so airborne that, um, I mean, the only reason I think about these things is because my mom's a nurse, so she like comes home and like, says you need to be cautious of these things, and I wouldn't even think of them if she had it made them aware because you know it's just day-to-day -day activities we do and we don't even think about like oh like 
we're breathing and that can uh, let out water particles that can transmit this disease. So there is a lot that goes into an in-person, like I know we'd all love to do something in person, especially to parents. Like everybody wants to see their baby walk across that stage. Mm-hmm. I wanted my parents to be there clapping for me as well. Um, but you know, we just, we just want to be safe. Safe is the first thing that we want to safety. The first thing. Yeah. So just keep that. I just wanted everyone to keep that in mind, especially parents with suggestions. Cause you know, we want to keep everyone safe while still honoring the seniors. And there's a lot that goes into, um, in-person activities, especially if we decide to do them in June and there's something like alphabetical or even different days. There's just a lot that goes into those events. Thank you, Layla. I appreciate it. What other remarks would you share, um, students, in this hour that we have our parents online? And I just want to thank everyone that's joined us today virtually. And what an honor to sit on these Hollywood squares uh, with you, students and principals. Um, what would what message would you share with parents? students and then we'll see if Mr. Cooley has any more questions and then I want to wrap because Shay got me thinking about it is what are your next steps and I know there's a lot of uncertainty right now that some of your plans you know are kind of holding in the air there but um, it's important to know where you're thinking you're headed off to Uh, but other remarks for your parents. Shay start us off on that one. Um, as far as remarks for my parents, just graduation is just, uh, it's, it's a gift that I want to be able to give them because I've, I've been supported so, so well for the last 13 years of my education. So, um, that's a gift I wanted to give to my, my parents, my coaches, my teachers. Um, uh, as far as plans after high school, was that the next part? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm going to USC next year. Uh, hopefully if like we go in the fall and uh, I'll be participating in a NROTC. That's great. And majoring in uh, political science. That's wonderful. Thank you. Maybe running for office someday, Shay? Uh, we'll see. We'll see. (laughs) (laughs) Very good. All right. Um, Mr. Cluey, I'll do one more, then we'll come over to you for a question. Rashaya. What would you? What message would you share during this hour? We have our parents on with us. Um, honestly, one message that I really have is that I understand that you want to see like everybody had their own like, picture of how the year was going to go, and no, that's not going to happen. Just be open to everything that all the ideas that's coming like coming through just be open and open-minded and that's basically it just taking everything not at once but just taking everything thank you so much everybody had their own moving picture of how this year would go thank you that's beautiful um um santana did you haven't talked about this part yet have you a message for parents Oh, and Rashaya, what are you doing next? Um, uh, working and I haven't chosen exactly which college I was going to go to, but that's definitely in my, so that's basically next. Very good. Working and going, going to school. Very good. All right. Santana, what is your message for parents? Um, I think the thing I always keep going back to is just keeping perspective that we are so lucky to have gotten the education over the past couple of years. We've had such amazing teachers and administrators fighting for us. Um, So though like it hasn't ended in the way that we wanted or parents wanted, that just all these things that are going on for us are because of all the hard work that's continuing to be done on our behalf. So just to instead of like trying to bring those things down, take those things and say thank you and celebrate there. Um, For my after school plans, I actually am going to the University of Michigan. So I'll be moving down the street. Um, (laughs) Yeah. That's great. Thank you. 
All right, help me out. I've lost my place. Who have I not spoken to on this topic? I think it's Raya, right? Um, so I just want to say thank you to all the parents. Like, we know they would love to see their kids be honored, but everything happens for a reason, and we'll get our time soon. Um, and after college, I'm going to Amherst to play basketball. Good. Wonderful. All right, did I get all of, did I get all of you on that round? Help me. All right. Um, very good. Mr. Layla. Layla, help us on that. What about your words for parents and what are you doing next? Um, my words for parents, kind of what Rhea said, it would really just be a big thank you. Like, I know I personally can't imagine even receiving this diploma without the unconditional support and love from my parents. Um, as well as taking my next few steps in life. I, I don't know what I would do without just their unconditional love and support. And I know that I'm not in the minority saying that. So just a big thank you to all the parents, all the work you did for your um, student since kindergarten, you know, sitting down with them, doing those homework problems, um, just everything. A big thank you for everything. And um, after, well, if this virus allows in August, I'll be going to Spelman College in Atlanta, which is a historical black college or university for three years. And then there's a, a dual program there. I'll be there for three years. Then um, I'll be at Syracuse Law School for three years. So I'll be doing um, political science at Spelman, then law at Syracuse. So I'm pretty excited about that, yeah. Thank you. Principals and parents out there, aren't you proud of these beautiful, beautiful students? Just a great, great representation. And I know there are 1,200 more out there uh, who are members of your class as well. Mr. Cluley, we've got just about five or six minutes here to end up. Uh, what other things do you have rolling on your feed there that we can respond to? So I think it would be good to retouch on, uh, we, we addressed it for the students, but a lot of the parents came in after the fact and I've seen come up several times. So the question about, when seniors, seniors are done with their classwork, um, are they now going all the way to the end or are they still able to get out earlier than the younger grades? Okay, and that is a tough question, Mr. Cluey. Uh, they do have to meet some expectations on their distance learning in order uh, to graduate. Um, and uh, principals, does anybody want to jump in on this and answer that question about early dismissal versus, I know our first ceremony is community on the 12th, so I think it's safe to say they'll, you know, they'll all be done before that time because we've got to get ready for that ceremony, but principals, did you want to add anything or, um, okay, so stay tuned for more information on, on that particular question. Okay. Yes, Rishaya. Um, I know there was, uh, there's students, like, I know there's students who are, like, have, want to be graduated from two schools since they, like, attended both schools yes. at one point in time. Yes. Um, are they still doing that? Like, being they able to, yes. be graduate from both schools? They yeah. absolutely mm -hmm. can graduate from both, yes. I love that. I love every year seeing okay. gr graduates at both. Well, how do we get, uh, cap and downs for like both, for both schools? So I would just make sure that you've touched base with your principals and let them know. Um, and you will absolutely be included in that, Rashaya. So uh, excellent. Okay. Very also, good. I have another question, I'm sorry. No, um, it's good. For the, the obligations like library books and stuff that the students have to pay, are, how are we gonna do that? And that's a, we're waiting for the governor's next lifting of the shelter order. So we'll know more. So you'll hear those pickup details and your turn in details directly from your principal. And okay. uh, that'll apply sometime after June the 1st is when that part will, will begin to happen. Um, Mr. Okay. Cody, and thank you. Anything else? Okay. Um, what have we not said today? 
uh, principals and most important honored guests, our graduates of the class of 2020, what have we not said uh, that needed to be said today? All right. Yes. Go ahead, um, Ray. I know a big part, like, it's a small thing, but like senior class pictures. Yeah. Um, is there anything, like, any word on that or? So that's the group picture. Yes. Um, principals can, that's a good question. Thank you. I hadn't had that question yet. Um, I know principals have been thinking and working on this. Principals, how do we, how are we thinking about those senior class photos? Well, um, I think it depends on whether your school had their photo taken or if you're like Huron students, we didn't get to take that photo. And so we're thinking, trying to think in unconventional ways to recreate a photo. And we're not sure whether that's possible or not, but we're certainly exploring it. Mm -hmm. Very good. Mr. McAmill, you wanted to add? Uh, it's very similar to what uh, Dr. Schwam had said. It's just our goal is going to be um, those schools that did have an opportunity to, to get their seniors together prior to, we'll be able to utilize that. And those who haven't, we'll be looking at some kind of virtual composite way um, to get you guys together. I know, again, it's not ideal, but um, like, I, like we've said, those little special moments and each little thing that we can think to do, we're going to do our best to make it happen. That's great. Um, how many of you are planning to watch the Obamas on Saturday? Are you going to be a part of that? Oh, good. Oh, that's great. Okay, well, I hope to see you on, um, I'll try to send some things out on Twitter. Um, and if it's okay, I'm going to get your photo while you're all, all on here. Is that all right? We'll just take one second and then we'll wrap up. But I'm so proud of each of you and of the contribution that you make. Um, you are a special class. And I don't know if you were able to see Julie Hang's article in the in the Detroit Free Press, but she said uh, she made just uh, a beautiful statement about uh, humanity, the moments of humanity being so much larger than these moments, and yet these passing moments for us, and yet um, it's hard to remember that sometime. Before we sign off, I never want to be together without saying to you all and to everyone out there, uh, we are not alone. We are together. And if you or anyone you know is experiencing challenges with mental health or depression or concerns of any kind, uh, we have those resources on our website. Uh, you are not more than one text or one phone call away from a teacher, a counselor, a class principal, a, a principal, a superintendent who cares about you. So I just want you to make sure as you talk to your friends, as you Zoom or Facebook or whatever, in, whatever technology you're using, Please let us know. We are responding. We're connecting students and parents with community resources, with our resources, uh, because we know that this is a hard time for folks. It's a challenging time. I am so proud of the way you're handling it. I look forward to the amazing creativity that you're going to put in this framework of our 2020 commencement. Um, and forever and always, you will be, class of 2020, one of a kind. And I'm not understanding why you've been chosen for this moment, uh, but you were born following 9-11 and you graduate with COVID. There's something special that you've been called to do, and I'm so proud of you. And I know that you're going to accomplish amazing things. So I appreciate your time today, remember for your uh, colleagues and your parents and uh, folks who weren't available, this broadcast will be on our website. So if anyone's interested, they can look at it anytime and view it. Um, any other remarks as we wrap today? Uh, yes, uh, Santana. 
Um, well, I was looking through the comments section as we were on the video, and I just said, I just wanted to say thank you to all the parents and family members who are on here who are asking all these questions. And I see a bunch of others who are responding to them. So okay. thanks for fighting for us. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you.